Well, hello, lovely listeners. Today, it gives me a great honor to meet Sam Mitchell. Sam is a teenager living with autism and Sam brings to you autism rocks and rolls. Sam's had obstacles in his past, still has some daily struggles, but he's using his platform to take away the stigma of autism and any other conditions that many think are disabilities. He often brings guests into the conversation um, because Sam has been interviewing some, um, some high profile people in the world of autism, some celebrities, um, and he wants to prove that he's not broken and he doesn't need to be fixed. So Sam has a lot of fun along the way and he really loves to entertain his audience. So Sam, thank you so much for being on today. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> and where are you in America right now? Indiana. Indiana. It's a central area. Cool. And is it cold there, like here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Sam, so I love our, my listeners to have a bit of backstory, really, about um, my guests. And you've, you've introduced this Autism Rocks and Rolls. How did that idea come about? So if you can give us a little bit of history about how all that happened. Yeah, it really started after I joined my uh, high school's media club, and I really enjoyed it. So being a senior, that you can't be a can't be at school forever. So I figured the only way to continue my media skills was to start my own podcast. Okay. And so, are you still at high school now, Sam? No, I've graduated. So how old are you now? Nineteen. I'm in college. You're in college now. Okay, so so this whole sort of message that you have about autism, what what is driving you to want to want the, the wider world to to understand more about the fact that you're not broken? Well, I think we need to say that we don't need to be pitied. That everyone is everyone. There's no one. There's nothing to be sorry about. We're all human and we all are going to have different abilities with different talents it's not a sign of weakness it's a sign of strength yeah yeah i totally agree um so how does how would you say autism challenges your life if you see it as a challenge you might not see it as a challenge but if you talk if we think about you know your school life and things like that um what sort of challenges have you had along the way to sort of get you to this point um, I've had anxiety really bad. I have had to deal with exclusion for most of my life. Still do some days. And then I've also had like really bad sensory feels. I don't like wearing certain clothes or like I don't like to wear a wet t-shirt or dress up. I don't like to do that. I don't play dress up really. And I've also uh employability skills i think i'm good at that but the problem is 70 percent of people with autism can't keep a job because of a certain behavior and what what behavior is that probably the same anxiety being blunt um not making plan b's um over analyzing which i think is a personally a goal a good goal maybe having a meltdown in the middle of the job i mean those reasons Okay. And you talked to about exclusion a minute ago. What does that mean for you? What what does exclusion look like for you? Oh, it just means like you know that people don't care about you, they don't notice you, they they walk in you like you're a piece of gar garbage. Oh wow. So that's how you feel at school, or do you have your, your a nice set of friends? Oh yes, I have a set of friends now, but previously I would say yeah, and sometimes with others, yeah. But I do have a big, but I have a group of friends and I'm grateful for it every day. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you, do you, some of your friends also have autism or are they, uh, yeah, yeah? Yeah, some of them do. I mean, not all, I mean, some are, have their own challenges. Yeah. But they're all pretty great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. And you mentioned um, clothing. So what sort of clothing do you go for? Um, basically not, nothing with a hole in it or that is wet or not a suit and tie. Oh. If I have, I'll do, if I have to, I'll do it, but uh, I, pre I prefer wearing something else. Thank you. 
Okay, and um, when did Autism Rocks and Rolls start? It started in October 2019. I can't give you the exact date, but I can tell you the month and the year. So 2019, yeah? Yep. And did that come to you in a, you know, in a flash of inspiration or is it something you'd been thinking about for a while? It was a flash of inspiration. Inspiration because of we wanted to start that podcast and after the media club and we thought about it and we decided that it make I decided to use this platform to help people and that's when we decided to do some with autism and the world some with disabilities and here we are okay so there was you and some friends that started it is there and not not friends it's really me who started the podcast but I but Thundercast, yeah, I had some peers that helped me along the way with that. But Autism Rocks and Rolls was all me. Yeah. So how did you start getting your first guests? Where did you look for your guests? Well, the, fir the first two, two guests was recommended by my mother, who's my editor. And I was like, okay, we can do that. And then we decided to start with Simon Majumdaris and Iron Chef Judge on Cutthroat Kitchen and Guy's Grocery Games. Well, we decided, so I decided, because we learned that he has a nephew who's on the spectrum. And at first we thought, nah, he probably, he probably wasn't going to respond, but I thought, well, can we at least try? I mean, I'm probably not going to, he probably won't respond either, but let's give it a shot. The next day he responds and we did a big, we met him and he was very, probably in the top five most humble celebrities of all time. A. And BB also got an interview him, and he also came to what he didn't come like for like the whole TED Talk, but he also came to see like the end of like the TED Talk event in twenty, the Bloomington TED Talk event in twenty twenty one. Yeah, we twenty twenty. Excuse me. That's okay. That's okay. We we haven't mentioned your TED Talk. So um, how did that come about? That came out because I was recommended a couple of times and we i did get picked so we went went through the process and we decided to um do it we had to do it virtual because of covid yeah but we were able to do it and it was called soul structure and why autistic people need structure just more in depth with the reason and was that something that you wrote yourself that whole talk or did you help have help or I had help. I had help with it, but the some of the idea the ideas really came from me. Was it scary? No, not not scary. It was virtual, so it wasn't too bad. But even if it was like on stage, I wouldn't have been afraid. I'm not I don't have stage fright. Really? No. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um good for you. So so you did that back in 2020. Um, and then the, the guests that you've had on your podcast since then, how, how are they coming around? Cause I, I've seen, you've got WEF, you've had a, some people on from, yeah, that, that was, that was a, that was a good moment. Um, really, I just asked really, I mean, I kind of an elaborative statement asking, but I really just asked and it's possible really. So, I mean, any person with a podcast can get guests within their area if they really ask and they have and they sound convincing so you're just literally like are you specifically targeting people that are um affected by autism or, or disabilities you have a story okay okay um and how do you find these people then are you just researching on the internet um something like childhood like nick foley i knew and i learned he had southern spectrum so i kept trying with him some of them are recommended by my mother. Some are through research, yes, to answer your question. But then there are some who have just said yes, who have volunteered. Al Snow, he volunteered graciously when I met him at a Bloomington wrestling event. So it all depends. It's a variety. Cool. And do you enjoy those doing those interviews? Oh, yeah. They're yeah. fun. Yeah. So, so what's the... Uh, bigger vision for autism rocks and rolls i know you've got your own merchandise is that right you sell your yeah. own t-shirts yep. 
But the big future, I'm just taking it one day at a time, really, because I want to see where it takes me. I mean, it take me somewhere big. It might take me somewhere little. I don't know. I'm just taking it one day at a time, really, to soothe the anxiety. And are you still suffering with anxiety? Yep. And how do you try and manage that? I really don't, but I just do the best I can. I really just try to keep my mind occupied with other things things before I remember what's giving me anxiety again. Okay. And do you have any sort of outside help, you know, for the anxiety? Yeah, I have a life I have a life coach and I I usually have help through family and friends. Okay. And if anybody's listening that may be um, suffering with anxiety now, have you got any sort of advice or pearls of wisdom for them? Not really, but I guess the biggest thing I could say is find what works for you. I mean, it's different for everyone. I don't care how unrealistic or realistic it is. Find what works for you. Mm. So what does a typical day look like for you, Sam? Well, now there is. Every day variety is a little different. Monday, Sundays, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, I'll do either college homework or podcast work. That depends. But as far as Tuesdays and Thursdays, what happens is, as of now, I will get up, drive, not drive to college. I have to, I don't drive at all because it's not safe. I have depth perception issues. I have a friend drive me to college, do the classes, take a break, do another class, and head home. And then I go right into a tutoring session. Okay. So Tuesday and Thursdays, they don't end. All oh, right. Okay. And, um, in terms of, I know you said there's no big vision. You're sort of taking it each day as, as it comes sort of thing. So you, you've got your podcast, which is regular, um, which people can find Autism Rocks and Rolls. That's what it's called, yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that once a week? Do you do it more often than that? Uh, I try to do it every two to three a month. Okay. Typically, because being in college, so we were, we were going to do every 16 days. But due to sponsorship, we had to adjust it to every 13 days. So count 13 days from the last published day. Boom, that's the next day. Okay. Um, and are you are you looking for anybody in particular at the moment in terms of those guests? Um, Nick Foley, but you can find a way to get um, either Joe Kenda on the show or Gordon Ramsay. That'd be wonderful. Gordon Ramsay, did you say? Yep. <laughs> have you tried him have you approached him yet? not yet i'm i'm gonna I'm, I'm saving him for season two but, oh, okay. uh, yes but joe kenda he's like a big colorado detective if you watch thomas Ioner, he he's pretty big on like detective work but the cool thing is he he after he retired like from the detective he drove a special needs school bus oh, okay and what's the connection with gordon ramsay if, have you heard about his childhood? Uh, not particularly, no. Oh, you need to watch that. That that will explain your answer. You wonder why he's so blunt? Look, go go watch his childhood, and then you'll see why. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. So it's that's not the big. Thinking. It's not the best. And plus, his brother was on heroin a lot. Okay, so that's why you want to interview him. Yeah, that, and I just and I just think I just heard he's a outside of like his savage, blunt mouth. He's on off the cameras. He's a really great guy, is what I've heard. Okay, all right, that's cool. Um, so I, I guess Sam, um, keep doing what you're doing. You, you're doing amazingly. Um, it was your mom and dad that approached me to to get you on the show, and I. As soon as I read what they put, I thought, wow, what an inspiration you are. Thank um, you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and you've got the, excuse my my language, but you've got the balls to go out and do what you're doing and approach these celebrities and, and not give up. Um, and that's a massive inspiration, uh, not just to people with autism or disabilities. That's a massive inspiration to everyone, Sam, because there are a lot of people that do not have balls like you do. Yeah, well, that's good news. At least I feel like I got a pair of testicles. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I always like to finish um, off with any pearls of wisdom that you might have for people with autism that might might feel inspired listening to your story. Well, it's not with autism, but I would say, I think for everyone, if the world could be nice and not be stupid, I think we get along perfectly. <laughs> I love that. Um, and where can people find you, Sam? On their favorite media platform. My home page is the Podbean. I have a website, autismrocksmills.com. That has all of my media platforms, and you can look there. And some of the episodes are on there, too. Okay, cool. Well, I'll put that in the show notes and put a link in, yeah? Awesome. All right. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Um, I'm, am I keeping you up there, Sam? No, I'm good. <laughs> I, had a, I just had a stretch. All right, no problem. Well, awesome to meet you. Thank you so much for your time, and um, keep doing what you're doing. All righty, we'll do her. Take care. All right, take care. Thank you again. I'll You're also welcome. put you on like our show notes and I mean, not on the show notes. We have a website. We'll put you on appearances and hype you up a little bit too. Wonderful. That's great. Thank you. All right, cool. Thank take you. Care, you Sam. take care now. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.